right back with the author of Luckiest Girl Alive, Jessica Knoll. Give it up. The movie follows a young woman facing events from her past and her journey to healing. It's a story that deeply resonates with two women joining us now. In college, Salamisha was a victim of sexual assault. For years, she kept it to herself while the impacts of that trauma just kept compounding. Um, eventually, she shared her secret with her sister, and together they used creative expression that helped her heal. But it was also the start of a mission for these sisters to create a movement that's helping empower young women of color across Chicago. Um, they're what we call rad humans. Everybody, let's welcome Salamisha and Shahrazad. <laughs> So meet Jessica. Hello. <laughs> so Shahrazad, you came up with a creative way to help Salamisha process her trauma. Can, can you tell us about it? I was, in, I was 19 years old when Salamisha disclosed to me that she was a survivor of sexual assault. Mm. Um, and I was taking photography classes at the same time. And like many people, when they hear these things, you don't know what to do. And so I, I didn't know what to do. And so I like turned to my outlet, which was creativity. And I asked Salamisha if she could be a center of my photography project. And so I began documenting her and using creativity and photographing this journey of healing, photographing her in therapy, photographing mm -hmm. her in, at the gym, struggling with an eating disorder. And so I then took those images and I showed the class and they also then started sharing different types of stories. And so. 12 years later, we continue to do this project and I have thousands and thousands of images. Wow. So the photos of Salamisha were the start of something way bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the photo photographs, then we end up um, transforming the photographs for the public into a multimedia performance, mm -hmm. 90 minute performance that features music and photography and dance. And we toured that around different, around the country um, wow. for many, many, many years. And so we then, that, was, that project became the, the signature, the, the beginnings of our nonprofit, Along Walk Home, which yeah. is a nonprofit that uses arts to empower young people to end violence. And um, in 2009, um, we started a girls program called Girlfriends Leadership Institute, where we, all the lessons that we learned from traveling and, and touring with this um, project, we then bring that to the young girls Implement that we work it. with. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they do, um, we give them cameras, we give them journals, the things that we've learned. Um, Outlet. Edu yeah, give them education an outlet. Yeah. around domestic violence, sexual assault, and then what's, pretty amazing because they're just like the, I think the most brightest and brilliant young people. Um, they go out in the streets and they um, do marches for missing and murdered young people. Um, they bring it back to their schools and they educate and even in their homes and mm -hmm. you know, um, become this transformational leader. That domino ever. effect. Yeah. yeah. How, how does it feel to take something so painful mm -hmm. and turn it into real change for not just yourself but for your community? Yeah, well, I feel really honored first to be in this journey with my sister. Yeah. Um, but then also, I think we've influenced or inspired so many other adults, survived, thousands of adult uh, survivors of sexual assault, but really young people, um, over 600 girls ages from 12 to 17, who've gone on to be, you know, art therapists or uh, artists and activists. Mm -hmm. Their work has been shown in the New York Times and Chicago Tribune and Teen Vogue. So it's really inspiring to see their work inspired by this work. Um, but also, like, we all know the power of art to be this tool and this vehicle of social change and expression. And then also, just, it's so rare to see black women um, stories of healing. We may see the, we hear about the trauma, but we rarely hear about the healing. And so it's just been the biggest honor of my life to be even part of this process, to share my story within our community and our world at large. Mm -hmm. Well, Jessica, how does talking things out help you reclaim your narrative? Mm -hmm. For me, that has been writing. That has been the cathartic process of writing. And um, even hearing from other women who have written and told me their own stories mm -hmm. that just even putting that down on paper was mm -hmm. therapeutic for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some, form, some outlet, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, for any kind of trauma. It's so beautiful. It's like an unburdening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And taking the weight off. Yeah, 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 yeah I get it. Yeah. Um, well, our friends at Crocs are doing their part to create a world where everyone can be comfortable in their own shoes. Mm -hmm. They love how you're creating a more inclusive, equitable world for young girls, and that's why they're donating $20,000 to a long walk home. Yeah. <laughs> 